Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're looking at creating a first person controller which will be the basis of all our 3D tutorials and videos to come. So let's get started. First one that we need is to insert a new object and grab a 3D shape. The name of this is going to be block and any 3D shapes is going to be based off this one and any events that we do are going to be based off this as well. Create your block and the first thing you're going to notice is this is a cube but if we look at the size it's 120 by 120 but the z height is only 15. The way that construct scales in the z height is a little bit strange and this is primarily because it's a 2D engine that's now just adding 3D support. So one thing they've added on the latest update is if we click anywhere project properties and view we can now change the z axis scale from normalized to regular. This means now 15 is represented properly. Now I'm going to put this back to 120 to give me a cube. And I'm going to copy and paste this around my level. So I've got a lot of versions of this cube. And this just means when I'm playing the game later on and I'm trying it out, I can see some different reference points or different points of interest instead of just an empty white void. Now we've got them in place. We can insert a new object and we can grab our player. So I'm going to grab a sprite, I'm going to call it the player, and click anywhere. For its sprite, I'm just going to take an arrow that's facing to the right, as we're not going to see this as we're playing a first person game. I'm then going to scale down our player and place him in the center, and make sure initially visible is ticked off. So when we look at our feet, we don't see anything. Next, we can add our objects we need. So we need a 3D camera. We also need a mouse which will allow us to look around and a keyboard so we can actually move around. While we're here we're going to set up our behaviors so our dice we're going to add the solid behavior which we'll use to manage their collision and for our player we're going to add the custom behavior as a lot of the movement does not exist in contract at the moment because there's only 2D support for it so we need to make some movement behaviors of our own. So now we can move into the event sheet. I'm going to start by creating some global variables, and the first one is going to be player heights. I'm going to start by making my 45 pixels tall. I'm then going to create a second global variable, and we're going to call it player speed. And this is how fast my player moves. I'm going to set this to 200 by default. And then finally, I'm going to create one called mouse sense, and this is designed to scale back our mouse so it's not moving around really, really quickly. Now we've got them set up, we're going to add one more final thing, and that is a comment. Now this is going to be called camera, and the code below, the camera comment, will deal with anything that due to camera, whether that be mouse movement or anything else, and this just keeps our code organized and tidy. So our first event is going to be system, on start of layout, and we're going to use our 3D camera, and look parallel to layout. For the different parameters we need, we need player.x, player.y, and for the camera z, this one's a little bit more different. We're going to take player's z elevation, and we're going to add the player's height. This means our camera will not be on the floor, it will be slightly higher up, depending on what we set that number to be. For the look angle, we're going to do player.angle. Next, we need to adjust our camera when we move. With the keyboard so we're going to do every tick we're going to take our 3d camera set position and this is going to be player dot x player dot y and then player dot z elevation plus player height just like we had at the very start next we need to check if we're moving our mouse so we're going to do on movement and then we can do our 3d camera we can rotate our camera. Now for this, we're going to take mouse dot movement x and then divide that by our mouse sense to slow the camera down. We're going to do the same for the y, so mouse dot movement y, and then again divide it by our mouse sense to control the sensitivity. The final two ones stop our player from being able to backflip with the camera, so if they look all the way up, they can't keep going. And it's set to 0, 0180, which means we can look directly at our feet and directly up in the air. I'm going to scale this back a little bit to 0, 0160, so we can't look all the way down or all the way up. 
final thing we need for our camera is we're going to take our mouse on click and when we've clicked we're going to request something called a mouse pointer lock this means that we won't see our cursor anymore and we won't be able to move our cursor around the screen as the camera moves this means it's much easier to control our camera so first of all i can look around and if i click my camera is now locked in place and i can look all the way around me if i look all the way up i see white void at the moment and if i look all the way down i can see my feet so let's start getting the player movement working. Start by creating a new comment, and we're gonna call this movement. Again, this is about keeping our code organized. Create a new event, and we're gonna check our keyboard and check if a key is being held down. Now we're gonna start by checking W, and some of you might want to move with the arrow keys. We're actually gonna add both today. So I'm gonna right click to make this an or block. I'm gonna copy and paste this line of code, and now it's checking if W is down or up arrow is down instead. We're going to start by adding our actions first before we do the other directions. So the first thing we want is player, move at angle, and this is going to be our 3D camera dot x rotation, which we're adjusting when we look around. The distance we want to travel is the player's speed, which we set up earlier, and times that by dt which is the frames that we're currently running at. Second thing is add action. We're going to take our player, scroll down, and we want to push out of solid at an angle. Now, because we can't use the standard solid behavior in the way it works normally, we have to get a little bit creative. So we're checking if we're in a solid object, and then we're going to push the player out before the player even realizes they're in that solid object. So the first one, we're going to take our 3D camera, dot x rotation, we want to do the opposite of what we did before. So currently our angle is set to zero, so we're going to add 180. Now we can copy and paste this three more times. And I'm going to start by changing the controls. So instead of W, I'm going to use A to go left. And instead of up key, I'm going to use the left key. I'm going to do the same for right and down. Now that's set up, we need to adjust the code on the right hand side. So let's start with the A key. We're not going to use the camera rotation. We want to use the camera rotation minus 90. So we're going left. And again, we're going to do the opposite when we're pushing out for solids. So we're going to push out with plus 90. For the next one, we're going to the right this time. So we're going to start by adding 90 to show we're going to the right. And when you do your opposite, so we're going to minus 90. Final one for moving downwards, we're actually going to take our movement speed and we're going to minus the player's speed. Now when it comes to pushing our solids, we're just going to get rid of everything. So we're pushing out at a zero angle. And that is it. We now have our working first person controller. So now we can move around the level and any objects we will not be able to pass through and we're able to explore a 3D flat world. Now there'll be another video coming out on Tuesday on how to do gravity and jumping. So if you want to add more to your game, you'll have that option as well. So please stick around for more Construct videos. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.